untap your full potential with the untapped deck tracker. Both the in-game overlay and the personal stats provide a lot of value. Download it for free today using the link below and you'll be supporting the channel at the same time. Hello and welcome to another standard game the video. Today we're taking a look at a green-white ramp deck as voted on by my supporters on Patreon, built around Cultivator Colossus, the 7 mana mythic rare plant beast from Crimson Vow with Trample, whose power and toughness are each equal to the number of lands we control, and then when the Colossus enters a battlefield, we may put a land card from our hand onto the battlefield tapped, and if we do, we get to draw a card and repeat this process. And in a deck that's playing a whopping 30 lands, which is half of our deck, we're quite likely to be able to put several lands in play with the Colossus and kind of combo off, and then we're left with a giant Colossus that can usually close out the game in one or two attacks. So that's the goal of the deck. And now surprisingly, one of the most important lands in our deck is actually a blue-black land, Port of Carfell, which enters a battlefield tapped, produces blue mana, and for 6 mana we can tap and sacrifice it to mill 4 cards and then return a creature card from our graveyard to the battlefield tapped. Now how on earth are we going to activate a blue-black ability in a green-white deck? Well, that's where the World Tree comes in handy. A land that enters battlefield tapped produces green mana, and as long as we control six or more lands, all the lands we control can tap to add one mana of any color. So that will let us activate our Port of Carfell to potentially return a Cultivator Colossus from our graveyard to the battlefield if we happen to mill it or if the opponent countered or killed it. And that can even be activated in the opponent's end step, so we can even flash in a Cultivator Colossus end of turn. Thanks to the port, it's uncounterable, and then we can often untap and kill the opponent in one big attack. To help us assemble Port of Carfell plus the World Tree, we can also rely on Mulch, a 2-mana sorcery that reveals the top 4 cards of our library. We put all land cards revealed this way into our hand and the rest into our graveyard, so that's another way of potentially putting Cultivator Colossus in the graveyard to then get back with our port. And then in a deck with 30 lands, we're quite likely to find at least 2 lands with Mulch, so a nice bit of card advantage as well. And then at 5 mana, we've got Ren and 7, whose plus one ability is essentially the same as Mulch, so that can provide more card advantage and mill over Colossus. Then the zero ability can put any number of land cards from our hand onto the battlefield tapped, which is not an ability we should be using very often, since we would rather keep a number of lands in hand so we can combo off with our Cultivator Colossus and draw additional cards in the process, but it can sometimes be useful to just help us ramp and put more lands in play. Then the minus 3 creates the green Trifo creature token with reach that we all know, with power and toughness equal to the number of lands we control, which also combos nicely with our Colossus. And then the minus 8 can also return all permanent cards from our graveyard to our hand, and we get an emblem saying we don't have a maximum hand size. And then the final card that can help us assemble the World Tree plus Port of Carfell is Cartographer's Survey from Crimson Vow. A 4-mana sorcery lets us take a look at the top 7 cards of our library, putting up to 2 land cards from among them onto the battlefield tapped, and the rest goes on the bottom of our library. So that's another great way to help find specific lands, and of course also helps us ramp towards our Cultivator Colossus ahead of schedule. Then taking a look at the rest of our deck, at 2 mana we also have the full playset of Druid class, which will gain 1 life whenever land enters a battlefield under our control, which can gain a ton of life in combination with all the ramp cards and Cultivator Colossus, and then we can level it up on turn 3 potentially, letting us play an additional land on each of our turns, which is also useful for ramping, especially in a deck with so many lands. And then at level 3 for 5 mana, we can target one of our lands and it becomes a creature with haste whose power and toughness are each equal to the number of lands we control. So you can start to notice a bit of a trend here. Then we also have the full playset of Murasa Root Grazer, a 2-3 beast with vigilance, can tap to put a basic land card from our hand onto the battlefield, helping us ramp, but we can also tap it to return target basic land we control to its owner's hand, which is actually quite useful when we're about to cast our Cultivator Colossus, that way we can ensure that we can pick up a basic land after tapping it for mana, so we have a land in hand to start comboing off with our Cultivator Colossus, in case we didn't have another land in hand already. Then we already mentioned our survey, two copies of Yasharn, a 4-4 that when it enters a battlefield lets us search our library for a basic forest and basic plains card to put into our hand, and then players cannot pay life or sacrifice a non-land permanence to cast spells or activate abilities, so that can potentially shut down treasure tokens from the opponent. And then at 5 mana, besides Ren and 7, we also have the full playset of Doomscar to give us a chance against opposing creature decks, letting us destroy all creatures and we can also foretell it to then later cast for 3 mana instead of 5. 
And then the rest of our mana base includes six basic planes, six basic forests, which are important for Murasa Root Grazer and Yasharn, two copies of Lair of the Hydra, which is a nice creature land that can also become quite large in the late game. We've got a report of Carfell and the World Tree, and then some green white fixing with the pathway and the overgrown farmland. So that's our deck. Now let's jump in some games and see how the deck does. All right, we're on the play and. Yeah, I mean, this could work out if we draw a fourth land, which we should be able to. Would also like a second white source, specifically. But we've got a Doomscar for early interaction, Survey to Ramp, and then Double Colossus should get the job done. Now, playing a turn one port will not let me play turn two Root Grazer, so that's a risk we'll have to keep in mind. Opponents Red Green. I guess we'll foretell a Doomscar here and then can maybe play another tapped port next turn. Alright, Targnar. Possible our opponent some sort of Bard class deck, which explains why they were mulliganing quite aggressively. So, Survey should be able to find additional white mana, as we see another legendary creature here. So, Bard class seems likely. Now, I could Doomscar, or I could Survey... Probably fine to cast Survey here. And then, wow. We did not find a single land. That's impressive. Someone can uh, calculate the odds for me, but it's got to be pretty low. There's the partners. Luckily, we do still have the double white in hand for Doomscar. So hopefully this buys us some more time. And yeah, we're in a bit of trouble here since we only have the one green source, so we're quite far from casting Cultivator Colossus as our opponent finally plays Bard class. Druid class doesn't do us any favors, but it might be better than Root Grazer given that I have another Doomscar I might want to cast. Oof, Inferno of the Storm Mounts gonna hit me for 7, so that already forces the issue on Doomscar. And then... Yeah, we're dead to any other haste creature here, pretty much. Level 3 on Bard class to provide extra card advantage. And a Sentinel. Alright, so... Probably worth it to run in 7. And then leaving white mana, so if we... Plus into a green source, we can still play a Root Grazer at least. Alright, we found a green source, but it's tapped. Probably still worth playing here. And then, hopefully, if they don't top deck anything too powerful. Another Bard class is acceptable. And then next turn we can finally play our Cultivator Colossus. After plussing Ren to find more lands. So we'll start here. And we'll play Colossus. And get this party started. This is also going to gain us a ton of life with Druid class. So here's all the lands that we couldn't find earlier. <laughs> All right, not bad. So we put 10 lands in play just now. Opponent finds Magda, which does find another Inferno and Vorinclex, so two pretty good hits.
opponent can keep comboing off here if they want. Goes for another Magda. Which finds a land and a Sentinel. And that's gonna be it. So no Inferno to worry about. We get to untap. Let's take a look at our graveyard in the meantime. No Colossus in the graveyard just yet. So we could minus with Ren and Seven, make a huge token. Or we could plus to make it more likely to keep comboing with the Colossus we have in hand. Which is also reasonable. Yeah, I'm kind of liking the plus here. And then I might as well play another Druid class to gain a bit more life in the process. Here we go. All right. So we can attack. Forcing a trump at least. All righty, so... Yeah, let's move to combats. And get in for 25. And then I can still... Do all sorts of fun stuff here. We've got a port we could use, although there's no Colossus in the graveyard. Opponent falls to two. And then... Probably fine to just play a couple creatures out. As opposed to keep up port. Opponent will need to seriously combo off here with Barret class to still kill us. No planes left in the deck. Perhaps could have uh, played Yasharn first before attacking to grow the Colossus by one more. But I think we'll be just fine. Then we have double druid class, which could also be leveled up to turn a land into a creature. Can start minusing Ren. Still have 13 cards left in library. Alright, Minsk for one mana is a pretty good deal. But our opponent found two lands. That's probably not going to cut it here. Alright, so we missed on our first survey, but we still managed to eventually combo off. Sweet, on to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw. Don't actually love this hand. We've got a few too many 2-mana accelerants and not enough lands to actually get to Colossus. So this might actually be a mulligan. If I could replace two of these with additional lands, it would actually be fine. Alright, this is better. And we'll bottom one Root Grazer. And then we've got Mulch to find more lands for Root Grazer to put in play. Run on seven to ramp towards, which can start milling more lands and hopefully finding a Colossus at some point as well. So usually want to play our non-basic lands first. Might have actually wanted to play the white source in case we want a Doomscar, but the plan is to play an early Root Grazer instead of uh, setting up for a board wipe. 
there is Colossus. Alright, so all the pieces are in place. As long as Mulch can find a couple lanes. Might see a deadly dispute here. So your opponent will have five mana on turn three. The dream start. It's gonna be a Sanchmore Witch. That we can handle with the Doomscar. Alright, so can hit for two. Expect my opponent to take it and then can still put a land in play for Tell Doomscar. Next turn can play run and seven and then we're in a great spot to play our cultivator with maybe a few lands in hand. With the root grazer potentially bouncing a basic land back before playing Colossus. Uh -huh, opponent's Grixis colors with iteration. Nice card to have alongside Sedgemore Witch. So especially for opponents has removal for Colossus or counter spells, it's going to be important to find the World Tree plus Port of Carfell combo to eventually get it back. Another dispute sacks the pest. Put them digging for a blue land so they don't have to waste their treasure to cast Consider, which they found. Alright, so as the dust settles, opponents get a full grip. Yasharn also prevents them from sacrificing those treasures, so it might be worth playing over run and seven to slow down their mana development somewhat. Don't hate it. Let's play it before attacking so they can't make another pest at instant speed. Hit for two. And then we can use the Root Gracer at instant speed. So we can leave it on defense. Opponent struggling to figure out why they cannot sacrifice their treasures most likely. Alright, I'll pass it back and then next turn it might be Cultivator time. Could also take it slow, maybe play Run and Seven first, start plussing to hit a couple more lands. We'll see. It's gonna be a Wandering Mind, a nice addition from Crimson Vow, finding Hunt for Specimens. And what are they gonna learn for? Potentially the removal spell here. Which can exile Colossus? Nope, it's gonna be Sciences. And then the Witch does not want to attack. Alrighty. So, yeah, I think it's time to play Colossus. Your opponent's tapped out since they can't sack their treasures. And then I want to float all my mana. Double Q to do that as a shortcut. Return the basic lands. Since we're going to be able to put it back with the Colossus here. And hope for the best. So far so good. Can we find a world tree as well to go with the port? We can, alright. And we've got a backup Colossus ready to go. So not a bad turn. We've got 14 lanes in play. Another Wandering Mind. Could also be a game where we at some point cast Doomscar to reset the board and then Port can get back our Colossus from the graveyard. 
but of course trample means we can ignore some of these low toughness creatures. Professor Onyx, pretty clean answer to the Colossus if they can cast it. But currently it doesn't look like they're gonna deal with the Colossus. So step one I think is probably run and seven plus. Alright, hit a couple more lanes, and then I could play another Colossus here after using the Root Grazer, perhaps. So, let's do that. And then I won't be able to also play the Survey, I think that's acceptable. Still haven't actually played a land for the turn, but I don't think that makes a huge difference here. Colossus can attack, probably fine to leave Yasharn back for now. And then we can foretell another Doomscar or play a Root Grazer. Don't know if it matters. Opponent takes quite a bit of damage, all the way down to three. And sure, we'll foretell another Doomscar. Let's see how they get out of this. They can play Onyx, make me sacrifice one Colossus and still die to the other one. Maybe some combination of extra turns with Alrun's Epiphany could still get there. Although this deck doesn't really strike me like an Epiphany deck. Ooh, wow, Muriat Construct with Kicker. Actually quite large. Gets nine counters for each of our non-basic lanes. But uh, yeah, this should be game over. Can plus put some extra lanes in play if I want to but this should be more than enough. All right, GG's. All right. Nice showing of Cultivator Colossus here, on to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw with a fine hand. Root Grazer hopefully ramps us into turn 3 Yasharn or Survey. So happy to play the non-basic lands first, up against Blue-Red. And yeah, we'll play the Root Grazer. If they don't remove it, it's the only card that actually ramps towards my 4-drops. And if they kill it, we still have a Mulch we can cast at least. Uh, a Braid kills Root Grazer, fair enough. So we'll Mulch, see if we can draw into a tap land. Which we did. And then next turn maybe play Yasharn, which also prevents the opponent from sacrificing treasure tokens, which could definitely be relevant. And then we can play Ren. If we had a Colossus in hand, there would be more of an argument for playing Survey to ramp towards it. Opponent's not going to be able to play Windfall, so not a full value iteration. And uh, I'll keep holding on to my basic lands for now. I guess I'll have to discard to hand size if I grab two lanes. So I'll just grab the one. 
Looks like our opponents might have a one mana interactive spell available. Could be a foretold demon bolt, could be a fading hope or another spike field hazard. Right, there's Windfall, but again those two treasures don't do much at the moment. And then it's probably fine to play Ren and Seven. Now I'm not too keen on making a token right away. Even though it could block a Goldspan Dragon, it could also get bounced by Fading Hope. So it's kind of a close call, maybe I should start by attacking. And then, yeah, I mean, plussing with Ren can maybe mill over a Cultivator Colossus, which we can then reanimate with Port, even though I'm still missing the World Tree, I'm pretty likely to find it with Double Survey. So, do we want to make a token to potentially block a Dragon if our opponent's playing Goldspan? Could be worth it. Also applies more pressure. So they have less time to set up their extra turns with Epiphany. But we'll find out in a second whether or not they know about the treasure Yasharn interaction. Because if they had the iteration in hand, they would have been able to take two extra turns here. But because of Yasharn, they're two mana short. And yeah, I think our opponent's struggling to figure out why they cannot sacrifice their treasures. Opponent passes. Now, we could use Renan 7's zero ability to just grow our tree folk quite a bit, as well as play a survey here. So that might be worth it. Right, it's going to be a divide by zero. Fair enough. In that case, I think I'm still down to use Ren's zero ability and grow the tree folk. Then we will lose our planeswalker to an epiphany with the bird tokens attacking. Might still be worth it. Let's see, we would be hitting for 14, put them to two. But there is a non-zero chance that they can just combo off and kill me. Although it's, it's less likely with the Yasharn in play. Yeah, I guess we'll try it. We blossom and thrive. Uh, another divide by zero on Yasharn is bad news. So now they could easily uh, play their Epiphany alongside iteration. So that makes me more likely to want to keep my tree folk back. As opposed to hitting them for 10. So we'll just pass. And now with the extra lands in play it becomes easier to cast multiple spells in the same turn. So there's Iteration into Epiphany, opponent gets two extra turns. And we'll see what happens. Putting all those lands in play also made the opponent's teachings quite a bit worse than they maybe expected. A Leer can replay some stuff, although at the very least Divide by Zero is unable to bounce our Tree Folk token, which is quite important here. So goes for Iteration to dig for another Epiphany. I imagine they'll still kill my Planeswalker. But 
that they can also use a frostbite to take care of Ren and Seven. Uh, the birds are all going face. Opponent gets to take an extra turn, and hopefully no more extra turns from now on. At least Alrun's Epiphany has the decency of exiling itself, so Lear cannot replay it. It's gonna be Iteration. Into Windfall, most likely. Nope, they had another Epiphany in hand, so... Two more extra turns coming up. So yeah, definitely needed Yasharn to stick around. But divide by zero, a clean solution. Glad I left my tree folk back at least. But we might still be dead. Time for windfall. So eight mana available. At least they're not gonna cast teachings anytime soon. We'll be taking five here. Oh, opponent can actually kill my tree folk here. That's impressive. And a frostbite. All right, fair enough. And I guess they wanted to keep their bird life, so another frostbite. So we'll take five down to ten. And then they can put us to one. Divide by zero can maybe get the burn spell for the last point of damage. Nope, goes for a mascot exhibition. So I don't think we're dead on board, but probably won't be able to recover from this. Yeah, they should have gotten, if they have it in their sideboard, start from scratch to deal one damage. So it looks like we might actually get to take another turn. This is turn five in a row, I believe. But they can still learn with Divine by Zero to get a start from scratch, assuming they have one, which is not a guarantee. Alright, so our opponent passes with double divide by zero available. And yeah, don't have anything to really handle this situation. Can attack with a big lair of the Hydra, and that's it. So yeah, that's gonna be game. I do have a port of Carfell I can use to bring back Cultivator Colossus, which at least is uncounterable by the divide by zero but I also don't really see how that's going to win me the game. But might as well give it a shot here. Just to see some cool things happen. Maybe if we had a Druid class in play to gain life, this could have helped. So it doesn't look like they have a start from scratch. Alright, and we bricked after one draw. Alright, GG's.
On to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw. Our hands, not amazing, but I think still keepable. We've got Doom's card to buy time against the creature deck. And then if we can find the World Tree with Mulch, that sets up our port. And of course, drawing Cultivator Colossus is quite nice too. So, probably don't want to play port if we want to play a turn to Root Grazer. Play the planes in case we draw Lair of the Hydra, so we still have our green, but get her to play our non basics first. So, up against the Black Sacrifice deck, which is going to be good at killing a uh, Root Grazer early on, but hopefully, the card advantage from Colossus and the recursion with Port will push us over the top. That will require us to find a world tree at some point, and of course more green mana to cast Colossus in the first place. So putting quite a bit of faith in Mulch. Concealing Curtains. Uh-oh, that could actually take away Colossus. Good thing we drew a second. So let me start by attacking on the off chance that they take two damage. Opponent takes it. And then we'll mulch. And then I can play a port. And then I don't have to discard to hand size quite yet, so I'll wait on activating Root Grazer. And then we want to start prioritizing playing our green sources for Colossus. Curtains transforms. Let's gonna have a look. And we'll see what they take, if anything. So if they discard Colossus, we're still hoping to draw a World Tree to eventually reanimate it. So they can hit me for three. And we'll put a Planes in play. Alright, another Mulch. Seems worth casting. Right, only find the one port and then I can foretell. And then next turn we can already cast Colossus with a couple lands in hand. Six mana for our opponents. They're probably going to hang on to a Blood on the Snow to deal with Colossus. And then we're really hoping for that World Tree to enable port times two. And then we gotta make sure to pick up a land with our Root Grazer. So I guess I might as well attack for two firsts. Although I guess if they have instant speed removal, they could prevent me from picking up a land and floating my mana. So this might not have been worth it. All right, so float all our mana, double Q, pick up a basic. Uh oh, I used the wrong ability. All right, that's unfortunate. I meant to pick up a land there. All right, opponent's got the Soul Shatter, unsurprisingly. So I denied myself a draw step. Hopefully it's not going to cost me too much. And Infernal Grasp is the Root Gracer. All right, so we can pretend that our opponents cast the Infernal Grasp before I got a chance to pick up the land so I don't feel as bad about it. All 
All right, I guess uh, can go for another Colossus. Could run in seven and then plus first to pick up a few lands. Survey can also find the world tree. So we do have a couple options, which is nice. Yeah, I'm kind of liking survey plus run and seven. And then take it from there. Could also doom scar away the revealing eye. There's also Hive of the Eye Tyrant, which could exile my Colossus from the graveyard. But, um, yeah, let's run. Alright, keep those lands in hand. And then I imagine we'll see them kill Ren with the two creatures. And then we can still replay another Colossus. This time, hopefully, finding the World Tree. So, one Colossus exiled. Another Curtains, which they luckily cannot activate right now. Ooh, Druid Class is a nice one. Gains me quite a bit of life before going for the combo. Now, I could also Doomscar if I play a land. Is that worth it? I miss out on one draw step from Colossus, but I wipe away the two Curtains. It's probably worth it, actually. Another run and seven's good. And there's a world tree, perfect. So they can exile the second Colossus, but then... If they eventually kill the one in play, I'll be able to get it back. And then Druid Class also threatens a lot of damage, same goes for Lair of the Hydra. So I'm liking my position. There's the Blood on the Snow as expected. Getting back Eye Twitch. So, I want to leave enough mana to activate ports. And then that's essentially 7 mana, leaving 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12 mana. So, let's see, we've got 21 cards left. Probably no point in attacking with Lair or a big creature when they can jump with Eye Twitch. So instead, maybe go for Ren and Seven. And then do I want to make a Tree Folk? Or do I want a Plus? Plus is more fun. And then, let me just double check the mana situation here. Yeah, I can Survey and Foretell Doomscar and then still go for Port. And then go for World Tree Lair. And pass it back. And we can use the port at instant speed, even after they target something with Hive. Blood on this note to destroy all planeswalkers. That's fine. And Curtain's gonna see two lanes. Alright, and then activate port, and our opponent should be dead. Just have to be mindful that I don't deck myself, but we can always decline. But who wants to decline when you're comboing off like this? Alright, and our opponent concedes. So yeah, these black 
kind of uh, sacrifice control decks can usually deal with the first couple copies of Colossus, but once you get the port of Carfell engine going, it's eventually going to be too much for them to handle. Sweet. So, yeah, we got to see our green-white Colossus deck in action. Now, we didn't get matched against any mono-white aggro decks. That matchup is going to be pretty tough if our opponent has a good amount of disruption between Thalia making our non-creatures more expensive, as well as Elite Spellbinder potentially making our Colossus cost two more, which will make it difficult to then combo off and have a bunch of lands left in hand. So those are cards we don't want to see. And uh, in general, the white aggro deck can certainly deal a lot of damage quickly. So if we don't have a good start with like a turn two Druid class or Root Grazer, we might be too slow. And of course, Doomscar, also an incredibly important card in that matchup. So it is winnable, but overall I would probably still favor the white deck. So yeah, overall pretty fun green-white ramp deck. And I think a good home for Cultivator Colossus was quite pleased with the Port of Carfell combination. So that'll do it for today's gameplay. Wanna thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed. And as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel, and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.